Today's theme centers on God's call for transformation and the consequences of disobedience. We'll see how God seeks to shape us, much like clay in the hands of a potter, and how we should respond to his call for holiness and righteousness. Through the book of Jeremiah, we'll witness God's warning to his people and his invitation for repentance. In 1 Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul encourages us to live lives pleasing to God, stressing the importance of sanctification and readiness for the return of the Lord. Today's passages remind us of the profound consequences of ignoring God's will, while also offering us the hope and joy that come from walking in His ways. Let us pray. Father, we come before you with open hearts, ready to receive your word. Speak to us today through these passages and help us to understand the depth of your love, your righteousness, and the urgency of living in obedience to you. Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see the lessons you want to teach us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Amen. Thank you for joining today's devotional. We're blessed to be on this journey together, growing in faith, and seeking to understand the truth of God's Word. Let us now explore today's scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 16 to chapter 18 verse 23. In the first section, we see the powerful imagery of God as both judge and redeemer. Jeremiah chapter 16 verses 16 to 18 speaks of God sending for many fishers and hunters to bring the people of Israel to judgment for their iniquities. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them, and after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, and from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. For mine eyes are upon all their ways, they are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have defiled my land, they have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. God declares that there is no hiding from his judgment. The people of Israel had forsaken his laws, and their disobedience had brought about severe consequences. Despite their rejection of him, God promises a future restoration for those who return to him in repentance. Verses 19 to 21 express this hope. O Lord, my strength, and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know, I will cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. As we move into chapter 18, God uses the metaphor of a potter shaping clay to describe his relationship with Israel. Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 to 6 says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and, behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Here, we see God's sovereignty over his people. Just as the potter has control over the clay, so God has the right to shape and mold his people as he sees fit. However, Israel had resisted God's shaping choosing instead to walk in disobedience, which would ultimately lead to their destruction unless they repented. This image of God as the potter challenges us to examine our own hearts. Are we allowing God to shape us, or are we resisting his molding? God desires to make us into vessels of honor, but he needs our willing submission to his hands. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1 to chapter 5 verse 3. In the New Testament passage, the Apostle Paul encourages the Thessalonians to live lives that please God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 1 to 3, he writes, Furthermore then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Paul emphasizes that the will of God is for our sanctification. He instructs the believers to avoid sexual immorality and to live in holiness and honor, 
setting themselves apart for God's purposes. Verses 7-8 to eight reinforce this message, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Paul reminds us that rejecting God's call to holiness is not just disobedience to man, but to God himself. The sanctification process is a crucial part of our spiritual journey, and it requires that we continually align our lives with God's standards. As we move into chapter 5, Paul addresses the second coming of the Lord, urging the Thessalonians to remain vigilant and prepared. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2, he warns, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. The return of Christ is imminent, and it will come unexpectedly. Therefore, we are called to live with an eternal perspective, always ready for his return. Paul's exhortation encourages us to live with a sense of urgency, recognizing that every moment counts in our walk with God. The call to holiness and readiness is not just for our benefit, but also a testimony to the world around us. Psalm chapter 81 verse 1 to 16. In today's psalm, we are invited to sing aloud to God, the source of our strength. Psalm chapter 81 verse 1 declares, Sing aloud unto God our strength, make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. This psalm is a call to worship and a reminder of God's faithfulness to his people. Verses 10 to 12 express God's longing for Israel's obedience. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. God desires to bless and provide for his people, but their stubbornness and refusal to listen to him led to their downfall. This passage highlights the consequences of ignoring God's guidance, while also reminding us of his mercy when we choose to return to him. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 6 to 8. In the final section from Proverbs, we are given wisdom on humility and avoiding conflict. Proverbs chapter 25 verses 6 to 7 says, Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men, for better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. These verses remind us of the importance of humility. It is better to be exalted by others than to exalt oneself and be humbled. And now for the summary of key lessons. From today's scriptures, we learn. 1. The importance of obedience, submission to God's shaping, and living a life of holiness. 2. God is our potter, and we are the clay. If we resist his molding, we will face the consequences of our rebellion. But if we submit to his hands, he will make us into vessels of honor. 3. Paul's message in 1 Thessalonians teaches us to live in purity, preparing ourselves for the return of Christ. 4. Psalm 81 reminds us that God desires our worship and obedience, and 5. Proverbs gives us wisdom on humility and conflict. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the lessons you've taught us today. Help us to submit to your shaping, to live in holiness, and to prepare for the return of our Lord. May we walk in humility and seek to please you in all we do. Strengthen us in times of temptation, and help us to stay vigilant in our faith. In the name of Jesus we pray with thanksgiving, Amen and Amen. Here are additional prayer points for you to pray, taken from today's passages. 1. Pray for the grace to fully submit to God's will, allowing Him to shape your life as the potter shapes clay. 2. Ask God to help you live a life of holiness and sanctification, avoiding anything that displeases Him. 3. Pray for a heart of humility, to avoid pride and always seek to exalt God rather than yourself. 4. Ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance in preparing you for the return of Jesus Christ, so that you may always be ready and vigilant. 5. Pray for the strength to overcome temptation and walk in obedience to God's commands. 6. Ask God to restore areas of your life where disobedience has brought negative consequences, seeking His mercy and healing. 7. Pray for a deeper understanding of God's Word and His purposes, that you may align your life with His will.
8. Ask for a renewed heart of worship, to always honor and praise God for His faithfulness and provision. 9. Pray for wisdom in all your decisions, especially in avoiding unnecessary conflicts and walking in peace with others. And finally, 10. Ask God to bless you with a heart that listens to His voice and obeys His direction without hesitation. Thank you for watching today's devotional. Your continued support and dedication to these daily devotions are a blessing. We look forward to sharing more life-changing messages with you. Stay blessed, and may God's peace and strength be with you always. Shalom.